Welcome back to How to Build an F-14 Tomcat. I uh, been a little busy getting stuff done mostly here in the in the shop, but um, <clears throat> as, you, as you can see in the background there, I've got the vertical fin standing up. Both sides are molded. I've done a little bit of trimming on the actual mold itself, mostly around this front portion. I just got done laying that up. Um, this layup's a little lighter than the rest of it. <coughs> Mostly because we have two locating dowels here at the top, and then you've got another platform here that's 90 degrees to that other flange. And I've got two locating dowels here as well. So the um, reason why I made this one a little bit lighter is since you've got two locating dowels on 90 degrees from each other, within uh, probably about six inches or so, you're gonna have a, a fairly difficult time getting this portion of the mold out. So, um. With a little bit lighter, it's mostly it's pretty much the same layup schedule as the the two sides on the bottom here. But the back side is about uh, one layer of cloth lighter per uh, series of cloth. So instead of doing four layers of three ounce, then three layers of six ounce, and then two layers of this or three layers of this real heavy eighteen ounce stuff, I did four layers on the bottom of the two ounce and three on the back. And then I did three layers of the six ounce, and then I only did two layers of this 18 ounce. So what this should, what that should do is it should allow this uh, back flange to to flex just enough to get these front two dowels to pop loose, and then the other ones can come out. If that doesn't work, I'll come across the center of those locating keys, and I'll cut right down the center of them. That way, all I have to do is just pry straight up, and the two locating keys will come out the top but they'll still be there to keep it aligned side to side. So once that this portion of the mold is done curing, that mold is basically, well, it is done other than the trimming a little bit around the edges. So that's done. The, uh, the ventral fin, I laid that up last night. Both sides of that are done. I haven't, um, I haven't separated this mold yet. I'm gonna let it cure for a couple of days before I get on with that. And I've got the two overwing fairing hatches laid up and done. As you can see, the, the plugs are still in them. I haven't pulled those out yet. I'm a little worried <laughs> that they'll probably get destroyed or at least the, the stiffener portions of them will. If that happens, I'll just lay up a really uh, a really heavy set of fiberglass ones that I'll use as my new plugs and I'll just kind of hold on to these wood ones for whatever I may need them for later. So I'll, I'll end up using compressed air around the edges here to pop these loose. One thing I thought of after I laid these up is down along the center of these stiffeners what I'll probably do is once I get the plug pulled out I'll drill a, probably on this long one I'll probably put four holes down the length of it and another three holes on the short one. That way I can plug them with clay or molding wax or whatever, lay up my parts, and then I can, um, if I use uh, clay, I can just use a drill bit to kind of drill the that clay out of it. And I can use compressed air to go down through these little holes to actually help pop that part out. So that's one thing I'll probably definitely end up doing on these things just because of those stiffeners make it really difficult to, to pull apart. <coughs> So all that's done, you're probably looking at these three molds that are, well, you can only see two, but there's three there, I promise. Probably looking at them, wondering what's up with the gray and all the fiberglass cloth. I, uh, we have mentioned on one of the, on all of the forms that I'm kind of documenting the build on, is I was planning on hopefully getting a nose cone and an exhaust nozzle laid up today. That's what you're seeing here now. Um, I'll clean the, the plugs up or the, the molds up with just warm water and a uh, a dish sponge to get all the PVA from the actually making the molds off of them. Rewaxed them, PVA them, and then uh, since I'm planning on having this thing primered in the mold at the bare minimum when it goes to market, I uh, I just took some rust oleum metallic silver paint out of a rattle can. Cause I didn't feel like pulling out the whole painting equipment and the two part paint and all that crap. But um, I just put a real light mist coat in there at first 
let that uh, tack up for about 15 minutes. Here in the shop, it's about 72, 73 degrees right now, maybe a little warmer. So I let that tack up for about 15 minutes, and then I went in with a not a very heavy coat, but it was it was enough to where it completely covered. And this metallic silver doesn't cover all that well. It takes a couple of coats, but um, after that that dusting coat and then the we'll say a medium coverage coat, I uh, left it to dry for about two and a half to three hours here in the shop again. I think I turned the heat up to about 75, 76 for that. Um, put down the two coats of the surface resin, got most of that mold laid up, and then I came and I started doing the layups for the, uh, the exhaust nozzle and the nose cone. For the ex exhaust nozzle, what I did is I just cut some strips of six ounce cloth that were just slightly wider. I mean, just slightly by a quarter of an inch, if you can see it there. Then, uh, I had one that was just enough to kind of go around this whole thing, a whole 360 degrees. I took one half, one one mold half, put a coat of resin on the inside with, uh, with just the same old chip brushes. Then I took the cloth and I folded it into quarters. I laid the cloth down in there and then I un unraveled it. So basically you had half a mold and the cloth was laid down and then it fell, fell back on the inside. Then I took the other half put a coat of resin on that, clamped them together, and then I unrolled that cloth as I went around, making sure that as I put the cloth down in here, it butted up against the flange, and uh, a couple, and then I kind of rolled it around that flange just a little bit, maybe an eighth of an inch at most. That way it kind of gives you a little an area where you can kind of trim that cloth out so you get a real nice crisp line. Um, if you've got a belt sander, like a tabletop belt sand, sander big enough, you can actually just take this thing out of the out of the mold and just lay it right down on like some 220 grit paper for a couple seconds and get real nice even uh, sanding across the, the back side of it. So I did that. Um, then I did another layer and I just alternated the seam to where instead of it would be here, it would be down here at the bottom. Did that and then I did one more layer that I split into two pieces and I cut it so it was 45 off of it and it overlaps about four inches on either side and then I just took the uh, pill ply cloth this isn't really pill ply it's um for those who haven't seen my little uh, fiberglassing technique it's just 100% polyester uh, polyester dress lining and it's static free it's like a dollar a yard at Walmart or Joanne Fabrics. Um, the key is it needs to be this white dress liner. I think they've got it in yellow and red and black and all these other colors. White or yellow works the best. Um, and it kind of, it's hard to describe what it feels like, but I guess it kind of feels like a like tent canvas, sort of. So if you're going to one of those, either Walmart or Joanne's Fabrics looking for this stuff, just make sure it's dress lining or a dress liner and it's static free and it's 100% polyester is the most important other than it being a dress liner. Then I just cut little, anyway I took that and I cut some little sections of it, laid it in there, took a little chip brush to just kind of smooth it down and as you look down in here you can see kind of there how you've got some spots where it's gray colored and then as you roll around you see you got gray and then you got little white spots. Everywhere it's gray, it that's just where it soaked up excess resin. And then when you see these little white spots like that, to where it's not quite completely gray, but you see little pieces of gray where the, the fabric weave is. Um, it's just where it was a little, it wasn't as oversaturated with resin there as it was in the rest of the areas. So I did that. I did the exact same thing here on the nose cones halves. Um, the only reason these are laminated or molded separately is just because of the shape of them. It's impossible to get down in there. So what I'll do is I'm going to weave these for a couple hours until the the the, the layup goes green. Which um, it's at a point to where it's not quite fully cured, but it's not quite uh, still. The resin is not still wet. It's still sort of flexible, but um, 
when if you put your finger down on there, you shouldn't pull any resin off with it. Um, once it gets to that stage, I go around with a just a straight edge razor blade. I trim the cloth around the around the flanges of the molds on all three of them, and then I'll peel the peel ply off down around the edges, and I'll stick a piece of I'll probably one inch wide fiberglass tape down along the seam as far down as I can get it. So probably down to the last two inches of it. And then I'll uh, slap the two halves together, put that piece of tape down in there. And then this very end piece of peel ply will get pulled off completely. And the reason why I'm saying I'm going to pull this one off completely is because this whole end will get filled with, uh, with, a, with a really wet, uh, oozy mixture of resin and cotton flock. And I'll probably only fill the last whatever I can't get down there with the, the fiberglass tape. For the tape, I'll probably have to taper the last little bit to get as far down in there as possible. But the very tip will have a nice little, probably quarter inch deep section of uh, epoxy and cotton flock. That way it just, it, you get a nice strong bond there at the end. <clears throat> so pretty much that's where we are right now. I've gotten everything that I wanted to get done and then some this weekend. Um... I gotta study most, of, pretty much all of tomorrow and Tuesday for recurrency at work. But uh, tomorrow afternoon, I do plan on getting out here, pulling these two mold halves apart when I get this nose cone and exhaust nozzle. Um, I've got to make up the mounting plate for the exhaust nozzle, but I'll do that later. That's just gonna be. It's probably just gonna be eighth inch balsa that's laminated with some fiberglass on both sides, and then I'll use. Uh, some laminating resin to seal the inside of it and that'll actually act as the the aft hill pipe mount as well so it'll, ha it'll be some crazy little finger looking look thing finger looking contraption to hold the tail pipe centered in the middle of the exhaust nozzle but um do all that i'll get that last vertical fin molded or get that thing trimmed and basically all that's left to do is uh mold the wing panels the fuselage then I've got to make up the, I've got to lay up a set of wings, at least the forward portion of it, so I can make the spoiler, or not the spoiler, but the the leading edge slat plugs. And then I've got to make the plug for the, the carbon fiber wing spar that goes, uh, that the actual wing pivot brackets bolt to inside the fuselage. So basically three molds right now that I can finish doing, um, or that I can, three plugs that I can mold. And then after that, it's going to be making some plugs, which the carbon fiber spar box shouldn't be too difficult to make. That should only take me probably a day, maybe two at most. The weeding edge slats will take a little bit longer just because i got to make them, then i got to glass them and detail them and that whole process all over again. But um, like I said, hopefully I'm having, I'll have these, these wing panels and at bare minimum the top of the fuselage molded by Christmas. I'm shooting to have both wing panels and the fuselage molded done by the end of the year. And that'll, <laughs> that's actually my New Year's resolution for two years ago, so now it's this year's. <laughs> but um, that's where I'm at. Uh, when I get ready to pop these things out of the mold and trim them and everything and join them together, I'll pop in the video camera and I'll do another video. I know I keep saying that, but I'll do it this time because it's not quite as long of a process. So uh, until next time, you guys have a good evening, and we'll see you in the shop.